Hi, everyone. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to closing journal entries. So closing journal entries are the eighth step of our accounting cycle. It comes immediately after we've prepared all of the financial statements. What these journal entries do, these are, these are journal entries, just like every other journal entry we've seen. Regular journal entries, adjusting journal entries. This is just another set of journal entries that get made but they serve a very particular purpose. They are going to transfer the balances out of what we call temporary accounts and into what we call permanent accounts. Now, what do we mean when we say temporary and permanent accounts? Well, temporary accounts are basically your income statement accounts, your revenues and your expenses. If you think about your income statement, it covers a period of time. When you get to the end of an accounting period, you need to record or you need to report everything that happened during that period of time in the financial statements. But then you need to wipe the slate clean. You need a fresh start for a new income statement for the next period of time. That's what the closing journal entries do. They wipe that slate clean by transferring anything that's on the income statement into what we call a permanent account. And what are the permanent accounts? Well, those are your balance sheet accounts. Think about the balance sheet. The balance sheet is a report at a point in time. Why is it at a point in time? Well, it's because it's the balance in a given account at any given time. The accounts live in perpetuity. The accounts just keep growing. Your assets, your liability, your equity. And I say growing, growing being they go up or they go down. They just keep evolving over time. And they don't cover a period of time. There's no need to zero those out when you're done. Whatever you end one period with, say on calendar year, December 31, whatever you end the year with in terms of assets, liabilities, and equity is what you start the next year with in terms of assets, liability, and equity. So balance sheet accounts don't zero out. They just keep going in perpetuity. That's why we call those the permanent accounts. They're always there. They're always carrying balances. That balance just differs depending on which point in time you check on the balance, okay? So as a result of these closing entries, all temporary account balances, in other words, all revenues, all expenses will become zero. And what this does for us is it wipes that slate clean like I was talking about before. It lets us start the new accounting period ready to record new revenues, new expenses for a new period. All right, let's check how this works. First of all, I've already mentioned to you what we're going to do is we're going to close the temporary accounts into the permanent accounts. Now, how does it get there? How does a journal entry make this happen? Well, think about this. Your revenues and your expenses are components of retained earnings, right? Think about the retained earnings calculation for a moment. Beginning retained earnings plus net income minus dividends equals ending retained earnings. This plus net income right here, that is net income being transferred over to retained earnings. That's what we're gonna see in these closing journal entries. We're gonna see the components of income go away and we're going to see retained earnings go up or down to reflect this addition of income to it. I say up or down because if you have a net loss, it would go down. But in most cases, net income, it would go up. Those retained earnings are reported as part of shareholders' equity, which is a permanent account. So whatever retained earnings with you end with in one period, you start with that the next period. The balance just keeps rolling. Okay, This is the idea of, of how... Uh, the, the, the closing entries are going to get us there. Now let's go through the actual motions. So here's an example. Notice here's just a collection of ledgers. I kept it small so it wouldn't get too complicated. Here's your service revenue ledger. You have three expense ledgers, salaries, utilities, and taxes. And then here's your retained earnings ledger with the beginning retained earnings balance in it. All right, how are we going to close out the temporary accounts to retained earnings? Well, take a look at revenue. Revenues are credits, and therefore its balance is a credit. But what would happen if we debited revenue 
by its existing balance? Well, it would zero out. Look at the expenses. Expenses are debits, and therefore they carry a debit balance. Well, what would happen if we credited our expenses for their current balance? They would zero out. This is the idea of the closing entry. You're going to collect all your revenues, and you're going to debit them for whatever their existing balances are. And you're going to collect all your expenses, and you're going to credit them for whatever their existing balances are. And in doing so, they're all going to go to zero. But revenues and expenses won't match. There's going to be a slight difference between them. That difference is going to change the value of retained earnings therefore causing retained earnings to change by the exact amount of your net income, revenue difference with expenses. So let's see it play out here. Notice this is coming straight from the example on the, on the prior slide. We're using the same account. So I said, if we want to get rid of our revenue, all we have to do is debit it by its full balance. And what are we going to do on the other side of that journal entry? Well, we are going to credit retained earnings. So that makes retained earnings go up. Now, in this case, it's making return to retained earnings go up by the full amount of revenue, not just profit. But we're going to deal with that in just a moment. So this closes out the revenue accounts. Then we're going to take all of those expenses, and we are going to credit those expenses for their balances. That's going to zero all of them out. What do we debit? Well, we debit retained earnings. Now we've dumped all of our revenue into retained earnings. We've dumped all of our expenses in retained earnings. And the offset between these two effects to retained earnings equals net income. That's how net income gets into retained earnings. By the way, I show this as two separate entries for learning purposes, but you could just as easily combine them into a single entry that contains the debit to revenue, the credits to expenses, and a net credit to retained earnings for the difference for the net income. You could have done that as well. When we go back to our ledgers, this is what they now look like. Notice, revenue, zero, expense, zero, expense, zero, expense, zero. Retained earnings, because you credited it and debited it, has now increased in this example by $44,000 or net income in this case, had we done revenue minus expenses, net income was $44,000. All right, that's it for closing entries. Hopefully you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.